Good morning, Internet. This is Gorgeous Friends. In today's episode, we're going to talk about color and how color can affect our websites and designs and everything in life. It's going to be fun. I did start this design series. The first one was typography. So if you missed that, go back one video and you're going to be good. So today, let's talk about colors. It's going to be fun. So if you don't know anything about color or how to use it in your designs, well, let's go back all the way to the beginning when we were in elementary school and Susie was teaching us about red, green and blue. So the primary colors are yellow, red and blue. Basically, you cannot mix and match different colors together to obtain these. So they're quite unique. Now, how do we get other colors? Well, we can mix yellow and red, for example, and that is going to give us orange. Wow, look at that fancy animation. Fantastic. And we can basically apply the same to the other ones to get green and purple. So these are called secondary colors. All right. And now we can also take a secondary color with a primary color, such as for example, we can take this orange and this red and we can mix that as well together to get the triadic colors. Triadic? Triadic? Something like that is called. But it's fun because we get the whole spectrum here. Okay? So this is the whole thing. And you might find on the internet that this is basically what hue is. All right? So this whole color scheme, okay, these different shades of color are a type of hue. So the color of the color. Wow. Next up, we have saturation. Saturation basically describes the intensity of a color. A very saturated color is going to look bright and alive, whereas a unsaturated color is going to look dull and boring. So for example, this plant up here is very saturated. It looks bright. It looks very pretty. Whereas this plant right here, it's still green but it's just not saturated at all. And you can see this visually as well. If you go outside, maybe what I want to say is even brightness affects this. So if you walk outside at night and you look at the tree, it's you're not going to see that much green. Whereas if you go out and it's a bright sunny day, it's going to look green as fuck. So take a look, we picked a blue color here. And if I just basically drag down my slider, all the way to gray, we desaturate this blue. And this is called a tone, all right? So take a look, this is super intense blue. As we go lower, it becomes duller and duller. Eventually, we just get to a gray, all right? So completely de desaturated, we cannot even tell that this is blue. And as I told you, lightness also affects our color. So if I add a bunch of white to it or a bunch of black to it, it's going to change as well. So take a look here. We add a bunch of white to it. It just opens up, gives us a different shade of blue all the way till we get to white. And here with the shade, we just add a bunch of black. So here we just go darker and darker and darker. If you think about it, we actually used these things before. Hue, saturation, lightness. HSL, that's what that means. So basically, H stands for hue, which goes from 0 to 360. So if we use that slider and go all the way to the end, we start from red and end up through the whole range all the way back to red. Then we have saturation, which goes from 0 all the way to 100. And finally, we have lightness, which basically goes from dark all the way to white. Next up, let's talk about color of psychology and what each color means. So when you're starting off with the design, which color are you going to pick? Well, it really depends. Let's start off with the color red. Color red represents passion. It represents love. It represents fucking and sex and all the... I'm joking. Uh, those are probably the positive things about it, right? Like very passionate. It can be very exciting, energetic. So for example, in this Jack Daniels design here, it uses a heavy, very saturated red color to give energy to this design. And it's very attention grabbing. Again, you're going to see this in a bunch of sport designs because that just says intensity and energy and passion about a specific sport. Next up, we have the color blue, which represents intelligence. It represents trust, security, intelligence. You're going to see a bunch of tech websites use this, especially Twitter and Facebook. So it's also a color of communication. The color orange gives you a very friendly vibe of happiness and joy. Imagine like there's a sunset going down and it makes you feel super warm inside. It gives you a sense of success and confidence. So this fitness website here is perfect with this orange color. 
The color green is probably one of the simplest ones to explain. It's, a, it's the color of nature. So you're gonna see this used a ton in the websites or apps that are about health, are about eating healthy diet apps, stuff like that. It represents peacefulness, it represents growth and money. So when you see that button and it's green, well, it's, they want you to buy that. I also want to include non-color. So what is a non-color? It's the lack of a color. So white and black. And these also represent something. So black represents classiness and power, often is associated with luxury. So you can imagine brands like Nike and Apple, they have black logos, right? So they're very expensive. They often give off a feel of sophistication. White, on the other hand, can be very innocent, it can be pure, safe, and clean. So just going black and white can often lead you to a very clean and sophisticated looking website. Hey, so we learned what color to pick for our designs. What if I want to use multiple colors? You don't need to use multiple colors. Sometimes it's perfectly fine to use only one. You just take one color, let's say we're building a 420 website, so we're gonna be using the color green. Now, what I can do is just vary that color with saturation and lightness to achieve different kinds of shades of green. And this is what's called a monochromatic design. Okay, so if we take a look at this one, we have green tea, for example, yeah, tea. And as you can see, we have the header there that's extremely dark, but it's still green. And then for the paragraph and the text there, we just picked a lighter shaded green and it still looks fantastic. Okay, you still want to use a different color? Then just grab the color wheel and spin it. It should stop. A great resource to pick complementary colors is Adobe Color. So search Color Adobe and here it is. First of all, we have Inoculus, which basically represents you pick a color like green and it's going to give you kind of the edges of that, right? So kind of in that same range and it's going to create you a color scheme. We have Monochromatic, which we talked about. It's just going to give you a different shade of a specific color that you pick. So here, right, we have a, a more desaturated version of this orange. Complementary is a very popular one, which basically means that you're going to pick a color and the other one is going to be on the other end of this hue spectrum here. All right, so if we go with blue, then we have orange. You're gonna see this used in a bunch of movies as well. Um, the mid-tones and the highlights are gonna be orange while the shadows are gonna be bluish. And when you're using this complementary, you can pick one color as your primary that you're gonna be using a lot, and you can pick the orange as a secondary color. And there's a bunch of other ones here. These are less popular, so I wouldn't really even bother with these. Just stick to these first four. So there we go. Now you learn the basics of color theory. So next time you create a piece of art or design, you know how and why to apply a specific color. All right, so now we know typography. Now we know color. There's still more to come. So make sure you are subscribed to find out more. Check out the courses down below if you want to learn more about web development and programming. And until next time. Can I fade myself out? It worked.